Welcome to the ninth episode of this format. You really want to stick to the very end for this one. This video is packed with very interesting and unknown topics. Especially the fourth topic is extremely interesting. Make sure to sub to the channel if you enjoy the content and let's jump into this. This one was recommended by a viewer on my subreddit and it is really disturbing. The post reads, Russian digs out a camera out of his eye on YouTube. It's a channel of a Russian who believes he has cameras in his eyes. In two of his videos that are public on YouTube, he tears into one of his eyes with various tools, tweezers and syringes, and pulls out the sclera of his left eye piece by piece. The disturbing part is how calm he is about the whole ordeal, or how you can hear a small kid in the background, meaning this man probably has family to care for. Trigger warning. This is some serious stomach churning stuff. He definitely was not exaggerating. The video is so gross that I won't put you through it. He is pulling bits of eye out. I sadly cannot understand the language, but it seems to be a man struggling with his mental state and seems somewhat paranoid. He is convinced that there are cameras in his eye and tries to dig them out. In his newer videos, we can see that his eyes are healthy, so he somehow did not cause permanent damage to his eyes. He has a VK account and the description of his profile reads, I can't stand how it fries my eyes. And this stone is what my eyes are ready to arc out of my native place. Someone please help me. That's a very rough translation, but you can clearly tell how much he is struggling mentally. With oddities like these, they are likely to be discussed on forums as well. On 2CH, someone shares a lot more on this person. Here's a rough translation. It reads, a Ren TV lover from Perm named Alum, that's the YouTuber's real name, worked as a Cerberus guard until he went nuts. Everywhere, he began to imagine agents of the State Department who tried in every possible way to track down the Permian in order to give it to aliens who would conduct experiments on him until the end of his life. The guy began to think that microchips and cameras were built into his eyes, so he went to extreme measures and cut them in order to get rid of cyber surveillance. He pulled out his top layer of cornea without painkillers. He told about all this on his page. This topic goes a bit deeper, but due to the language barrier, that's most of what I could gather. Also, the channel uploads to this date. This one was recommended by Martina Silva on Instagram. It's a fairly recent case. On the 7th of January 2022, 18-year-old Alexis Avila was captured by a CCTV camera while tossing a black bag into the trash. This happened near Broadmoor shopping center. While this obviously seems like nothing out of the ordinary, with the following information, you might agree that Alexis is an extremely rotten and deranged individual. Later that day, dumpster divers heard a cry and thought it was a cat at first. Unexpectedly, they found the bag and discovered a baby alive inside. The baby spent six cold hours in the dumpster, before it was rescued. While police reviewed the footage, they also saw numerous people dumping trash on the baby for six hours. The baby boy was then taken to a house hospital, before being transported to a Lubbock hospital that has a more advanced NICU unit. The baby was also given a blood transfusion, put on a feeding tube and given oxygen. Court documents say when evaluated, the baby's temperature was so low that it didn't register indicating hypothermia. The baby is currently in stable condition. The police looked into the footage and identified the suspect. Alexis Avila admitted to the crime. On the same day, Alexis shares in the interrogation that she experienced stomach pain and unexpectedly gave birth. She further explained that she panicked and didn't know who to call or what to do. The baby was wrapped in a dirty and wet bath towel. The umbilical cord was still attached to the baby. During the questionnaire, the investigators asked how she put the baby into the dumpster. Avila proceeded to laugh while answering, blaming her young age for her actions. Alexis also added, quote, What do you mean? Like in the trash? I just tossed it in. I was in a panic. I just turned 18. It's not like I've been 18 forever. As for the boy's father, he didn't even know that she was still pregnant when she gave birth. While Alexis was charged, she wants her conditions of release to be changed. She wants to be allowed to go into her backyard and have contact with her nieces and nephews. And she also wants to have supervised visits with her child, even though she nearly took his life. 
In 2018, Justin Bilton and his father had a miraculous escape from a wildfire in Glacier National Park in Montana. The forest catched fire due to lightning. The fire was completely out of control. Justin and his father were notified too late and were in the middle of the fire. The forest was already devoured by the fire, so the only way out was to take the road filled with burning trees. The entire thing was captured by a dash cam, so let's have a look. Dad, this is insane. I know. What? Easy, easy, easy. You can't see, just go easy now. Easy. Dad, the car is heating up, it's gonna explode. Oh, Jesus, God, help us. Dad, what if a tree falls on us? Please, God, help us. We can't get out. I'm getting out. You we can't drive back. I can, we get that out of the road, we get gloves. Dad, we gotta get out of here. Back it up. While they were trying to escape, the road was blocked by a burning tree, essentially trapping them inside the forest. While the father wanted to move the tree out of the way, it was just unrealistic. Limited in their options, they decided to drive the entire way back. Meanwhile, the car was getting heated up, meaning it could potentially explode at any given moment. They eventually decided to abandon their car due to the risk of explosion and ran for a nearby lake. Luckily, they were saved by two park employees on a boat. They were completely unharmed and made it out safely. Before we proceed with the next big topic, let's quickly talk about today's sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped offers great products for all men out there. One of their packages is the Perfect Package 4.0, which also includes the Lawnmower 4.0. It's an electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts in the most sensitive regions of the body. It's cordless and waterproof, so you can trim in the shower. That's super convenient, and obviously the cleanup is very easy. It has a super smart charging system with a wireless charging dock, and the LEDs show you how much power it has. On top of everything the package offers, you'll also get two gifts for free. Go to manscaped.com or use the link down below to get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus the two free gifts when you use the promo code MYSTERY20. All of the stuff in the package is extremely high quality and is definitely a worthwhile investment. Back to the video. This one is an extremely dark rabbit hole and I quite honestly sacrificed some of my mental health going through this. I investigated this topic with Zeus, a fellow investigator and viewer. This topic was recommended to me by a different viewer on Instagram. While he was looking into a different case, he stumbled upon a channel which is uploading videos of cats. However, just by glancing over the thumbnails, we see that this channel definitely does not seem to upload ordinary cat videos. The videos do not depict the full version. Instead, we see a cut version of the video. We see the part prior or after the torment of these cats. This is to circumvent the deletion of the video or a possible takedown of the entire channel. Overall, the content itself is nothing that violates the YouTube guidelines, so it makes sense that this channel would remain online to this date. For instance, in the newest video, we can see a cat in a cage. After a few seconds, the uploader decided to show an image of the cat. This goes on for the majority of the video. Near the end, it cuts back to the footage. The cat looks vastly different from the image in the previous footage shown. It looks like dirt or something on the body. It's unclear what it really is. However, the audio pretty much reveals what caused the dramatic change in appearance. While I won't play the audio here, you can hear a blowtorch. The description of this video reads, Provided Gato. Thank you. While you can only hear a blowtorch in the video, it's confirmed that the blowtorch was used to burn the cat alive. In total, the lives of 13 cats were taken this way. 52-year-old Makoto Oya is the perpetrator. He shared videos of him doing this for 13 months before he was arrested. The footage is very graphic, hence the cut version on YouTube. During the first stages of trial, Makoto would argue that it shouldn't be a crime to take the lives of these cats, since he was only quote-unquote carrying out a pest control. More specifically, he said, The excrement and urine of cats stinks. Their nails are sharpened to injure. I don't recognize the extermination of harmful animals to be a violation of the law. He was only sentenced to nearly two years and probably only served one. So it's confirmable that these videos are definitely the real deal. Moving on to the other videos. 
This video here does not even contain video footage. It's just a JPEG of a cat. However, the gruesome part is again the audio. You can hear a cat and boiling water. With the overall theme of this channel, uploading snippets of longer videos of cats being tormented, it just gives off a very eerie feeling. Also, the description of this video doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It is encrypted in a fiend cipher. Once decrypted, we get the following translation. It turns out that if the gato squeal is not too intense, it won't be deleted. We again have the word gato being used in these descriptions. Translating gato into English results into nothing. It could be a code word for cat. In Spanish it translates into cat. However, this word is used in this way by pretty much everyone in this community. Why would they speak Japanese all the time, but only use this term from a different language? One possible explanation comes from one of my viewers. I was in contact with a Japanese native speaker, and they said that it's fairly common to use a word from a different language in such a way. While most of the things are in Japanese, the description of the channel is oddly in Korean. Translated, it reads, A cat's life is beautiful. The channel also uses different types of coding techniques to encrypt titles and descriptions. Translating the title in this video, for instance, gives us Karooji, video audio only. Again, a name of some sort. Karooji seems to be an individual. In terms of audio, we can hear an individual who seems to be kicking something, and you can also hear boiling water. It's really difficult to piece this entire thing together, since this seems to be a full flesh community of people who consume and produce this type of content. Also, the uploader is not encrypting his titles and descriptions for no reason. The videos are not intended to be fully understood by outsiders, only by people within their community. At least, that's my assumption. The description of this video reads deciphered, maybe this video won't be deleted, unless it's spammed with reports. There were other videos that also had encrypted titles or descriptions, but I was unable to decode them. The comments are pretty difficult to understand, and I only had Google Translate available to me, but I think you get the overall theme of these comments. One of them reads, It's a pity that I couldn't hear the voice, because the face art Gato was squeezed. Interesting to note is also the avatar of this user. It's identical to the thumbnail of one of the videos on the channel. As for the people behind this YouTube channel, they shared a few names. Here, the translation reads, Occasionally, Comrade Kuromutsu will post a link, but please be aware that due to the specifications of YouTube, if a link to an external site is posted by someone other than the poster, it will be automatically deleted. The user below adds the following, The last time I posted a link to Mina Chocolate, one of the legendary Gato videos you can see on YouTube, it was deleted. Kuromatsu translates into a type of fish. Gato, as we established, most likely stands for cat. However, in these comments, it feels like they are talking about individuals, not animals. The YouTube channel says that Kuromutsu will occasionally post a link. In a different comment, a user writes this. This roughly translates into, This poor guy got toxoplasma on his brain, and is now unable to tell the difference between Gato and Kuromutsu. Again, he specifically uses the word Kuromutsu and Gato. The name Kuromutsu is of interest here. According to archives found on 5CH, an anonymous Japanese text board founded in 1999, we can witness posts from a user called Mr. Kuromutsu on what appears to be the cat board on 5CH. After a bit of digging, there was a Twitter linked in the threads. This led to Kuromutsu's Twitter account. Very interesting is the bio here. While well, the first half of the bio is just some generic stuff, the last part is crucial here. I had this translated by a native speaker and it says, The Twitter user Kuromutsu doesn't partake in abuse. Those who accuse me of abuse will be sued for defamation. The following part is just a theory, so take it with a grain of salt. In the archive threads on 5CH, there was a back and forth between two anons, which I assume are Kuromutsu and a guy that goes by Hashiya. In this back and forth, one Anon, which probably is Kuromutsu, is getting accused of child and animal abuse. So it makes sense that Kuromutsu would write about that in his bio. While this rabbit hole goes even deeper, I'll stop here. In 2021, a woman named Keen Winchester was sitting in the living room of her home with her two-year-old son when she heard a suspicious noise. She says that she heard a loud bang and a man yelling for help. After ignoring the man for a while, 
the banging and yelling became louder. Realizing that the man wanted to break in, the mother grabbed her son and barricaded themselves in the bathroom. Everything was captured by the CCTV camera outside the house, so let's have a look. Using a piece of wood he found outside, he shattered the windows to break into the house. The mother reacted by calling the police. While she was waiting for police to arrive, the man was searching the house. Luckily for the mother and the son, the man couldn't find them. Police arrived, arresting the man. Whether the man will receive any charges is unclear. It's also unclear what his motive or intention was. Further, it's unclear what he would have done if he found them in the house. Now, this is a very interesting topic for actually a full video, but I won't go too much in depth on purpose. I hope that one day a different YouTuber picks this topic up and covers it in a deep dive on their channel. It's truly one of the most interesting things I've seen in a while. I initially saw this while browsing through Reddit. A user on the Internet Mystery subreddit shared a post with the title, Have any YouTubers covered the dark story of Nokia 2 2 yet? Would love to see a good analysis. Who is Nokia 2 2? Well, let me explain. There are numerous hacking forums even on the surface web. One of them is called Hack Forums. Hack Forums is an internet forum dedicated to discussions related to hacker culture and computer security. On this website, a user that goes by Nokia 2 2 was very well known for years. He joined the forum on the 28th of July 2009 and later hosted contests to begin supporting the forum. He was very generous giving away huge amounts of money. The total amount is estimated at around $11,700. He was later given a group named Red Lions and started recruiting members in 2011. Generally, he is described as generous, kind and charitable and upgraded over 70 members on hack forums. So if everything sounds good about this guy, why is there a dark mystery surrounding him? In 2016, Nokia 2 became inactive causing for a lot of speculation as to what happened to him. Years later, we found out about the true identity of this user. He is Saud al Qatani, a Saudi royal court advisor working in the Royal Saudi Air Force as a sergeant. He worked directly for the crown prince. I'm sure you've heard about Jamal Khashoggi, a journalist for the Washington Post who was assassinated like no other. I highly recommend reading into this case if you haven't already. How does Nokia 2 2 play into this? Well, according to Arab and Turkish sources, he organized the Khashoggi operation. He talked to Khashoggi via Skype and insulted him. Before he left the call, he told the team to, quote, bring me the head of the dog, obviously referring to Khashoggi. It's a very complex case and there's more to it. To think that someone being so well liked by others and very generous on a forum would turn out to be involved in the intelligence agency of Saudi Arabia and involved in such a gruesome case was really shocking to see. When I first saw this footage, I honestly thought that this was fake. However, this entire thing is legit, even though it may seem odd at first glance. An Uber driver was stopped by a stranger on the street. As you can witness in the footage, the man can be seen slowly moving towards the car, but the driver is reversing. The driver was talking while everything happened. Damn, so I have this crazy guy that just popped up in front of my car out of nowhere. I called the cops. I'm on Ocean Parkway between X and Y, and he won't let me through. Look, let's say I want to try to go through, he's not letting me through. I think you might now understand why this seems off. The driver is way too relaxed and it almost sounds like he's acting. It doesn't seem like a genuine situation or reaction. Still, as I mentioned before, this is completely authentic and real. The man in front of the car seems to be under the influence. The driver continues to talk to himself in the car. Crazy people in New York. Yo, do you need money, bro? Do you need help? Are you okay? What's going on? Unexpectedly, at least for me, police actually arrived at the scene. As you can see in the footage, the man in front of the car seems completely unfazed by the police. 
He continues walking towards the car. The man stopped and was put in handcuffs. From the outside looking into it, his behavior made no sense at all. It's hard to tell what his exact intentions were. Well, he probably didn't know himself. The Covina police released doorbell footage of two armed suspected burglars at the front door of a Covina home. The two suspects, who wore hoods over their heads and what appeared to be bandanas on their faces, walked up to the front door of the home located in the 1500 block of East Elgro Street at around 9.15 pm. One suspect was armed with a chrome revolver, while the other held brass knuckles in his right fist and a tire iron in his left hand. The man knocked on the door repeatedly and were captured on the homeowner's ring doorbell camera. Let's have a look. Yo! Yo! Yo, Kevin! Come on, bro! The resident inside the home saw the men on the video and immediately called the police. The suspects continued knocking for approximately one minute before fleeing the scene in a white van. The van left eastbound towards Starkland Drive and the vehicle was gone before officers arrived. To this date, the suspects remain unknown. This dates way back to 2009. A guy named Joe Cummings lived in a New York apartment and started realizing that food was disappearing from his fridge, even though he knew that he wasn't eating it. He confronted his girlfriend about it, but she claimed that she didn't eat any of it. Joe didn't believe her and decided to set up a camera overnight to catch her. After Joe looked at the footage in the morning, he saw the following. In the description, Joe adds that she climbed down from a storage area. However, it has no connection to outside ventilation. He thinks that she broke into the house through the window. In the footage, she can be seen eating food from the fridge. There are also noises of liquid, which Joe confirms as her urinating into his sink. While she was standing near the fridge, Joe decided to walk up, which forced her to hide. After he walked back, she came out of her hiding place. It ends with her returning to the storage area. In the morning, Joe decided to review the footage and immediately called the police. The police arrived and took the woman out of the storage area to arrest her. Police assumed that she was living there for a few weeks already. She probably was planning on robbing him, but her real intentions remain unknown to this date. I made an update on this already in episode 5 of this format. I talked about how I know who's behind these animations and that she wants to digitalize even more VHS tapes and ask people on Reddit for help. Again, this isn't really a creepy topic but rather a wholesome one, so I thought I'd share this at the end. On the Nanny Lynn subreddit, someone shared the following. Hey Nanny Lynn fans, I'm really excited to share two new, unseen collections of NL animations. Lynn trusted me with transferring her tapes and asked me to share them with the community here. Because of the age of the VHS tapes and having not been played in a long time, they were not in the best shape when I received them. I'm thankful to the standby program at Merker Media for cleaning and transferring these works of art so they'll be preserved for the future. I also have a higher resolution and cleaner transfer of the first collection that I'll upload next. Please enjoy and share with friends. The two new animations are called Teddy Bears and Little Friends and Cookie Crunchers and Other Tales. Check them out on YouTube if you are interested. Before ending this off, I want to quickly thank the patrons in the Elite and Legend tier, which consist of 44, Christopher J. McCulloch, Courtney O'Colt, Krebs Ugen, Dave Birkins, DJ Chest R, Electrocat, Illy Bueno, Ian Wenkmer, Finder Kanem Ludwiga, Foster Bradley, I Love the Second Amendment, James Baker, Laura Hansen, Lord of the Lizards, Madeline Tanner, Mark Oxy, Nekius Beardius, NX Equal, Rick, S4BRE, Jinxed, 
Santino Sierra, Shawnee, William Taylor, Amy Stringfellow, Elena Hachu's mom, Andrew 906, Bodie, Brian Cave, Brian Ashaf, Cameron Mishit, Christopher, Dark Nalol, Denise Dreesfire, Digital Capybara, Erica Romero, Jeb, Lunaros, Maria Schönberger, Malcolm Mart, MG, Nick Castle, Noodles, Raleigh Bear, Radislav Koshevi, and Witch Corpse. Thanks to every other patron and the supporter tier, I really appreciate that. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.